Hello, I'm at the park. I am sitting in a field and there's people playing basketball and people sitting. So I'm feeling very uncomfortable. I've got Vampirology, the true history of the Fallen Ones. I'm sitting outside. The sky is beautiful. The sun is setting. Just gorgeous. Sitting and reading. I've read this intro part about the different mythology creatures around the world and now I'm reading about their origin story and I'm planning on reading the origin page this map page Alrighty, so that clip you just saw was me reading at the park and it was really bloody awkward when a lady walked past me while I was filming it so it kind of cuts off quite abruptly because I was like oh mm, mm, mm. <laughs> but um so vampirology is what I was reading um so this was like one of those pop-up books that I got as a kid and each little section talks about how to like kill vampires tells you about the lore of the vampires so I find it really funny that they have like a vampires of history section here and they have like big public figures that are like vampires so this book this like lore in particular has three different types of vampires they all i can't pronounce the names very well so i'm not going to try but they have like a full-on family tree in three different categories so like hephaestus athena and anubis gilgamesh they're all from one type of vampire and then you have like achilles set all of like these other deities and like public figures so like genghis khan is from that particular um type of vampire and then you have the last one which is like aphrodite and just like it's just it's really cool how they've managed to like take these personality types and act their actions of these historical figures and put categorize them into the three different vampires you've got the more melancholy brooding type and then you've got the more like flat out war i'm going to murder you all and I just think it's so interesting how they've managed to take that aspect of history and sort of twist it to fit this narrative. Um, and they do go into detail about how to survive and how to, like, what what items protect you. It's just, it's so cute. I love the fact that, like, they went to this effort. Like, I just... Oh, this was my shit as a kid. Like, they have... Um, this world map and like different events that have happened and it's like where marked on the map whereabouts they were at that time like the different types of vampires were ruling what areas at that point of time it, it just it's so cool this was like my favorite one of my favorite books as a child I'd read it all the time backyard I got like a little area set up here under this tree I read here the other day. I say, my father is usually relieved when I don't explain things. Daphne laughs again, less joyously, and cries a little more. I've been such a fool, she says in a small voice. My mother might have killed me, I think. And then, my mother isn't here. And then, how did my mother feel about gay people? His father ever mentioned it. I just finished Anywhere the Wind Blows by Rainbow Wow. Rainbow Rao. Sorry, my pronunciation is butchering things right now. So, first book is Carry On. What was the second book? My Wayward Son. Carry on, Wayward Sun, and now it's Anyway the Wind Blows. Um, this, so Carry On introduces you to the world of magic, the Chosen One story, and all that drama. And then the second one is more of a road trip vibe. They're going to New York, and now this one, it lifts off right from when they come back to England from New York. Uh, you've got Baz and Simon going through more relationship issues. Um, you also have them also like simultaneously being more intimate with each other and like really developing what it means for them to be in a relationship together. Uh, you have a character who I seriously thought was gay. Like the moment I saw them, I was like, that's a gay. <laughs> um, we have... For a moment there, I got confused by two characters being the same person, but that was just me being stupid, and then I remembered, oh wait, no, they're two different people. 
this is what happens when you decide to read the third book after you finish the first and the second book, like, years apart from each other. Uh, and I really liked the further development of the two characters that we, one of them that we met in um, America, and then the one who we've known from the beginning. I loved the way that their relationship grew as she helped him with his issues. Um, it just it was such a good, wholesome vibe. Like, it just made me feel so good. And, like, the intimate scenes between Simon and Baz were, like, weirdly attractive, like, weirdly hot. There was, like, wings and, like, tail, and I was like, you know, I don't mind this. This is kind of saucy. <laughs> It was just, you know, I chose that one because it was Baz is a Vampire. That wasn't originally going to be the plan for this video, but it's here. You know, I finished it, so I might as well talk about it. I am now going to sit and just read on my phone. I think I might actually go have a bath. I'm in the mood for, like, some self-care. <laughs> you know, I might get some popcorn, read my ebook, just some romance. This one is Blood Moon. So the previous, you know, it's I've, I've talked about it before. It's the series where like each book is with a different brother. The previous one, they were in a like her the main character Lucy. She's, she's the only human character in the beginning. She, her cousin is, has come to town and they're like looking after her. This is in the previous book. And then she gets like attacked at the end of the book. And now it's like her dealing with the fact that she's a vampire and stuff. This is still from Lucy's perspective. She's now joining the hunting crew that one of the other love interests, Hunter, what a cool kid ink. Her name, she's a hunter and her name is Hunter. <laughs> um, now she is joined, like Lucy's now joining in with Hunter and learning about what it's like to be a hunter. And the previous book ended like on a huge cliffhanger. And now I'm just like, I need to keep reading. Like I need to know what happens, you know? So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm not going to talk about how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go do it. Cool. <laughs> so I've been you know just sitting and reading and just trying to focus on my phone for a lot today so I'm gonna go for a walk and I just watched Books and Lava like vlog from like seven days ago catching up and she picked up an anthology called Vampires Never Get Old and I just feel like it's the perfect time for me to listen to it so I've got it up on my phone I'm going to go for my walk and listen to it. I don't have headphones, so whoever I walk past can enjoy. <laughs> I finished Blood Moon. That's the series of the Drake Chronicles. Um, this one ended on a cliffhanger, so I'm going to have to pick up the next one like really fucking quick. Um, and this one, it conti obviously because it's like the fifth book in the series, it's continuing on from the previous books so the whole like series starts off with this female becoming from like a family of vampires so the way the vampire system is set up in this particular series is that the drake family are a like one of the eldest one of the older vampire like, families that the males are always like transform on like their 17th birthday I believe it was and this is the first time that one of the female family members has been born and she has the gene that will turn her into a vampire she has a sort of legacy like a prophecy to her birth and her changing into a vampire so this book goes back and follows the the, intro the characters that were introduced in the first novel. We have Lucy, we have Solange, and we have Nicholas. Nick, um, along with, like, some of the other characters, like, you know, it's a full set of char characters that you've met throughout the series, and now it's just, like, they, like, focus on each, like, different characters through different books, and this one is going back to who we met in the first book, just to continue the story. And it ended on a cliffhanger. I need to know what happens. We've got 
a lot of like inner turmoil from Solange, who is the I'm mispronouncing her name like crazy, but also I don't care. <laughs> um, she is going through some like inner turmoil. She's hearing it in a voice. She has like an extra set of fangs. So at this point, I think she has like three fangs on each side, which is rare. Usually only like the and they only usually have one fang, and then the more like feral they get, the more fangs they have. Um. So yeah, they've got like the blood moon going on, which is this like festival kind of thing where all these vampires are coming to town, meaning that more hunters are in town as well. It's drama drama. I wish that there was more going on with Nicholas because um, something happens to him and they don't really show much of that. And I wish that I could see more of it. Crickets are coming out. I'm so sorry. Um, I also finished listening to Vampires Never Get Old, and because it was a short story collection, I took notes on what star ratings I did for each story, and there were some of them that were like really good that I loved. Um, there were mostly four stars for me. Um, but like high four stars, like some of them could have been five stars, but overall I think they're like threes and twos. Um, some of the stories that like stood out a lot to me, one of them was um, The Boys from Blood River. Um, I rate that four stars, which is the second story in the anthology. And it reminds me a bit of like the Lost Boys um, like vibe, where like it's a group of vampires who kind of travel from town to town each together and they follow this song it just it was really nice i really liked it i remember which one it was uh it was i'll tell you what happens in it well not all of it but um there was one story i can't remember which one it was called um but it was about this little boy who was raised into like he was born into a vampire family and basically like there he lives on his own with his parents and he's really wanting to look at his reflection like his reflection is something that he's just like super curious about and someone moves nearby and he decides that he's going to go and try and sneak into their house um he does get into the house and he s purchases a, like night vision camera with it and is trying to like see himself but then like his mother like a murder murder <laughs> kill kill and then it's like it progresses from there and it's about him finding himself and also being able to see himself for what he is without his parents' influence and I just I really enjoyed it I think each story Although not all of them were really my, like, favourites, I still enjoyed them a lot. I can't really say what I wanted out of it. I just, you know, I find most short story collections, they're not usually five stars for me unless it's, like, all very similar, like, stories or all written by the same author. I don't know, man. I can't explain it. But... I just really enjoyed it, you know? Anyway, I'm gonna go watch probably The Lost Boys. I think that's the movie that I really wanna watch right now. Just another vampire vibe. This cricket is really annoying me. I am so sorry for this shitty ending. But yeah, I finished all my books. I had a good time. I'm gonna watch a movie and just chill for the rest of the day. Bye bye. See you next time.